Welcome. Today we will cover the topic of system and context boundaries. Listen closely to learn about the fundamentals of system and context boundaries. Let's start with what we mean with the concept of system context. The easiest way to understand what is meant by system context is to consider an example. Let's say we hear that the Human Resources Department wants to implement a new Human Resources Management System. The definition of the system context in this case is influenced by a variety of different aspects within the Human Resources arena. Let's consider each aspect one by one. People. An example of the people who can form part of the definition of your system context include the HR manager, recruitment consultants, or anyone else in the organization that works with or is impacted by the Human Resources System. Systems in operation. An example of this would be an existing system that may be used in the Human Resources Department that needs to be replaced. The system in operation will be a key part of your requirements engineering work and therefore must form part of your system context. Processes. In the example of the Human Resources context, you would need to consider business processes such as recruitment, performance management, payroll and records management. These business processes all have valuable information to help you define the requirements of the human resources system and is therefore part of the system context. Events. Technical or physical events can help define the requirements system's context as well. Examples of these types of events could be that a certain technical infrastructure change throughout the company at a certain time during your project could have a direct impact on your requirements. This means that you should include the technical events details into the system context you have to consider when defining your requirements. Documents is another aspect that could form part of your system context. In the example of the human resources system, you would need to include the legal policies and procedures that exist with the employment law of the country. This aspect, therefore, also forms part of your system's context when defining your requirements. In summary, you should include all these aspects when you define your system context in order to make sure that your requirements engineering work can be complete and accurate. It is quite crucial to consider all these aspects in the definition of the system context to ensure completeness. You must also ensure that you define your system context very clearly to enable the understanding of all your requirements in the correct context. In order to define the system context for your requirements effort, you must define the system boundary and the context boundary. Let's look at what each of these boundaries represent. Defining the system boundary is all about making a decision about which aspects pertain to the system to be developed and which aspects belong in the system context. In the example of the human resources system, consider which aspects is part of the human resources system and which parts are only informing the requirements for the system. The human resources system need to include all the functionality that is currently available in the current system but the system doesn't manage employment contracts. Therefore, the employment contracts are outside the system boundary, but the current system's functionality must be replicated and is inside the system boundary. Now let's look at defining the context boundary. The decision you have to make here is whether the aspect you're considering is within the context of the system or whether it is not relevant at all to the planned system. For example, in the human resources system example, the employment contracts is relevant to the human resources system and is therefore within the context boundary of the requirements efforts. However, if you consider the fact that the organization will be upgrading their printers at the same time of your project, you will place this outside the context boundary because this has no impact and is completely irrelevant to your requirements for the human resources system. If you are able to consider these decisions about the system and context boundary, when you consider all the key aspects, people, process, systems, events, and documents, you will be defining your system context with ease and clarity. There are three other key concepts for you to understand. Sources, sinks, and the gray zone. Let's take these one by one and see what they mean. Sources are the inputs to the system. These are often stakeholders or technical and non-technical system interfaces. In our example of the human resources system, we could see the document management system as a potential source of recruitment approval information. This could potentially be a technical interface into our system and therefore seen as a potential source into our system. Sinks are the outputs that we expect our system to provide. Again, these could be technical interfaces or reports that manually informs and supports other processes. In our example of the human resources system, 
This could be a technical data interface where the human resources system sends building access information to the property management system as an output or sync. The last key concept to take note of is that of the gray zone. The gray zone represents those areas of the system boundary that are not clearly defined. Often, the system boundary is only completely defined towards the end of the requirements engineering process. Before this time, there may be a vague idea that there will potentially be a source or interface entering the system in a particular area, but the specifics are not well understood. This then becomes the gray zone. In our human resources system example, we may not be 100% sure whether our system will have a payroll module, and therefore, this may or may not fall within the system boundary. Well done for sticking with me through this lesson. It is a fundamental and important topic for every requirements engineer to understand and apply correctly. I look forward to sharing the next topic with you in the next video.